How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific 3 Eastern, Sunday 3 Pacific 6 Eastern. Friday here on the show, you know what that means? We've got a lot to talk about here today. Not the least of which, SmackDown tonight. Bad Bunny is on SmackDown, which airs tonight from Puerto Rico. The WWE pay-per-view is tomorrow. We'll go over the full lineup for the show later on in the program today. A lot of matches announced for the show. And, uh, yeah, we'll give you the lineup for SmackDown as well. Vince McMahon following a payment to WWE. One of the lawsuits against the company has been dropped. Specifically, a lawsuit against the executive chairman. We'll tell you what he did to get that thing dropped. Three guesses. We've got updates on AW All In in Wembley. We actually don't have an update after the last couple of hours, but as of yesterday, 50,000 tickets, $6.5 million. And uh, the official on sale date is today. So uh, we'll try to get some updates there, but it's looking. It's looking big. I'm talking really big. And we still have months and months left until the show actually takes place. And no matches have been announced. The vast majority, I'm sure, will be sold by the end of this weekend. But you never know what will happen as we uh, get closer and we'll see how everything starts to heat up with the expected collision show debuting as expected in June. We've got notes on the WWE World Heavyweight Championship Tournament. That's going to be a whole show in and of itself. We've got more notes on Collision, what the plans are for that show. Dynamite on Wednesday, down 10% for, from last week. We'll give you all of the details on that and uh, plenty more as well. Lots of news to get into today. That should be exciting. We'll kick it off after the break. Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Like I said, we're Vivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. It's Friday on the show. Normally, Friday is like, whatever. But we got a lot to get into, actually. Plenty of news here today. First off, SmackDown is tonight, as everyone's well aware. Bad Bunny is going to appear on the show. Cody is going to appear on the show. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Karrion Cross, and the OC will be taking on the Viking Raiders. This is all leading to the pay-per-view tomorrow, where seven matches are announced. We have Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sammy versus Solo, Sokoa, Jey Uso, and Jimmy Uso. And in theory, in theory, the Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens versus the Usos story ends tomorrow because they are all going to different brands, and allegedly, that's it. Is that it? Well, of course not. But that's what they're claiming. So if they're going to have Solo turn on the Usos or whatever they're going to do, tomorrow's the day that, uh, in theory, they have to do it. Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. Rhea Ripley versus Zelina Vega for the title. It's a championship match in Puerto Rico with Zelina challenging for the belt. Seth Rollins versus Omos, which uh, it was like, one of Vince's things that he has to do now that he's back is just make random Omos matches for every show because the guy's big. I have no idea why Seth Rollins is facing Omos. They've done virtually zilch to make you... In fact, I will say this. They've done zilch to make you care about it. They've done virtually zilch to build it up one way or the other. So, whoop de doo Wait, yes. wait, 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 wait. They have a new title now, and I know that Vince loves making random Omos matches. I mean, who wouldn't? But <laughs> could this be Could this be because Seth Rollins needs to beat a giant on the way to winning the new World Heavyweight Championship? You know what's funny, Mike, is that's not the worst idea, but I think it could be far worse. And that is that Omos beats Seth Rollins so that after Seth Rollins becomes the world heavyweight champion, they can feud throughout the summer. Because if there's anything these fans would want more, it is Omos. More Omos, including in championship matches. Omos. Omos. What are you you doing? What? Starting a new chant. Stop it immediately. 
Austin Theory, Bobby Lashley, Bronson Reed for Theory's title. Bianca Belair and Io Sky for Bianca's title. I'm not even saying what title they are because it's like they have to swap them at some point, so who cares? And Bad Bunny will be taking on Damian Priest. The crowd is going to be <laughs> nuclear. The building, the building may melt. I can confirm the building might actually melt, yes. even though it's made in part of stone. So be excited for that tomorrow, everybody. Do they still throw batteries and rocks and bags of urine? Because if they do in Puerto Rico, boy, is Dominic Mysterio going to have a long night, especially after he helps Rhea Ripley uh, win her match and, and take home that title. It's going to be insane. The other big story, obviously, is all in. The pre-sale ended up with 50,000 tickets sold and $6.5 million at the gate. The other day, they were at 35000 And we said, you know, if they don't sell one more ticket, this show is still a big success at 35000 But they continued to sell another 15,000 tickets the next day. So they are now at 50,000, 6.5 million. It is the most attended AEW show of all time by multitudes. It is the biggest gate of all time. And the official on sale started today. And it is at at least 60,000 now. 60,000 tickets sold. I have heard rumors, rumors that it is at 65,000, but I, I know that it is at, at least at 60, and uh, it is May 5th, so we still have three and a half months left to sell tickets. Now, I do believe that the vast majority of tickets will be sold by the end of this weekend, okay, but there's a lot of big things coming for AEW, not the least of which is Collision, which is believed to be starting in mid-June. That will be the new Saturday show, which uh, we could talk more about. But it's looking like there's going to be two shows, Dynamite and Collision, that are considered to be the A shows. And uh, we'll get into that more here in a while. But uh, Rampage is going to end up being what Dark and Elevation used to be. And... You know, CM Punk is expected to be the face of Collision. And so they will have two first-run two-hour shows weekly. This is starting in June. They will start building up matches for the Wembley Stadium show. And so, like, if you think that, you know, they sell 68,000 or whatever by the end of this weekend, and they're going to sell no more tickets, that's not going to happen. So now we're looking at how how close are we to all-time records for all companies, and uh, can they break the legitimate attendance record of WWE uh, with this show? So we shall we shall find out over the next three months or so. But uh, sixty thousand tickets, and probably at this point, uh. S- eight million dollar gate i would think maybe less because mm. these these tickets being sold now are probably cheaper than the ones they sold originally but probably seven and a half million dollar gate at this point so uh there you go not bad for a t-shirt company that's a lot of people you know it's a lot sold already months away and not having any matches announced so regardless of the you know anything that takes place on the event at the gate no one can deny that this was a massive success yes it was a roll of the dice for them to go ahead and start out with Wembley as opposed to Craven Cottage or something like that but it's a gamble that paid off so huge success now you just have to follow it up with a great show so people remember it for actually being a huge amazing event and not just you know the first time they were there and they sold a bunch of tickets so uh tonight also is Rampage and uh, the firm deletion is tonight. After watching the uh, segment on the farm, I have high hopes for the firm deletion. I presume it's already been taped and everything because, uh, 
You know, we had spoilers for uh, Rampage a couple of days ago, and no firm deletion was shown to the crowd. So we can all watch it coming up. Actually, like, I think in a couple hours, because I think, what is it, 2.30 oh, today or something like that? I think 2.30 Pacific, 5.30 Eastern. Yeah. Yes, no staggered feed once again for those of you on the West Coast. That's not a good time. No. Hey, oh, but you know, let me just ask you something. 3.30 Pacific here. 3.30, 3.30 and 6.30. You know, they don't have to have Solo Sokoa turn on the Usos. With the way they've been telling these stories, the only thing they really need to do is probably, obviously, have the, the good guys get the victory there and have some sort of miscommunication happen that can play into this whole very slow-moving storyline because if Sammy and Kevin are not going to be any part of this deal, this is going to be all about the Usos and Solo and Roman. That's the direction they've been going. So I don't think they have to make it so forceful and have Solo turn or Jay turn or something like that. They just need to have some sort of small miscommunication that pisses off Roman. All right. When we come back, we got a lot more to talk about. Vince McMahon lawsuit update. We have got this tournament, World Heavyweight Championship Tournament, Collision Notes, and uh, the AW Dynamite ratings from Wednesday. So back in a moment with more Observer Live. And the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Simberbibi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Hey, we're going to Vegas. Yes, Double or Nothing weekend. It's going to be a lot of fun. You should go. I'm going to tell you how. First, you can go to my Twitter, at Brian Alvarez. And there's a link up there. Come party with Dave and Brian. With this view. There's a view from the Cosmopolitan. Is this how this was written? That's how it's written here on the front page, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can go to f4wonline.com slash Vegas, and you can check out this uh, this convention. And we got a lot of stuff that we're going to be doing. Saturday. Meet and greet with Dave and I. Then there is a Q&A with Dave and I, followed by a professional wrestling show that Ed in San Antonio is promoting, which I am Poder. not wrestling on. Do you understand? Poder. Was it Poder Cinco? Yeah, it Cinco. Yeah. Five of them. And then we have the uh, F4W Sweet Party on Saturday night. Listen here, 9 p.m. to 2 a.m., Tom's got a show that he's doing in Vegas. So you could actually go to the sweet party, go to the show, come back to the sweet party. You can do all of this. See if you can keep up with filthy Tom. Yeah, you can't. And then uh, <laughs> Sunday, we have got the brunch at the Wicked Spoon in the morning. And then uh, Double or Nothing is in the evening. And uh, Friday, actually, we have got a, a dinner at Texas Day Brazil, which is a Brazilian steakhouse. All you can eat, meat and salad bar. All of these things we're going to be uh, we're going to be doing. So if you would like to go, f4wonline.com slash Vegas. We also have some ticket packages available, including a couple of uh, ticket packages that include a ticket to Double or Nothing. You can get the Double or Nothing ticket, the meet and greet, the Q&A, and the wrestling show. All of that is available as a package. The meet and greet Q&A and the wrestling show without the double or nothing ticket. The Q&A and the wrestling show alone. The wrestling show. We've got, uh, which by the way, if you get a ticket to the Q&A, uh, you can go to Ed's show free. What about that? Texas Day Brazil dinner. If you want to have dinner with us at the Brazilian Steakhouse. Uh, tickets to the Sweet Party, where we're going to have uh, boatloads of pizza and liquor. Yeah, that's only forty nine ninety nine to go have pizza and liquor and hang out with everybody at the Cosmo and then the brunch at the Wicked Spoon. So if you want to go and have some fun, man, every time we've done one of these, it's been fun. So if you want to do it, uh, F4WOnline.com slash Vegas. All of the ticket packages are available. And I think we actually have uh, two seats where you can sit in the suite with Dave and watch him. As he watches Double or Nothing and takes all of his notes. That's well, like a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity right yeah, there. Yeah, that's nice and everything, but what if I want to sit in the vicinity of Vinny? How do I do that? Well, I don't know what you can do about that. Are you sure? I think I think he's actually in the uh, the section that we have tickets for. So, Are there any yeah. rules against talking to Vinny? Like, I don't want to hear anything about the NFL draft right now. I'm not doing that. I don't Please think there's any alone. rules like that, no. Okay. Especially if you get him liquored up enough with the pizza going on at the sweet party. 
Following a Vince McMahon payment to WWE, a consolidated lawsuit filed in Delaware by shareholders against the company's executive chairman was dropped on Wednesday. The reason the suit was dropped was due to McMahon repaying $17.4 million in late March for expenses related to the investigation surrounding hush money allegations that came to light last summer. As a result, the, reason. the initial reason for the lawsuit was considered moot. Hmm. That's a real word, everybody. Moot. So the point is moot. It's ridiculous, but it's a real word. $17.4 million covers the cost of the investigation, but not the near $20 million that Vint allegedly paid multiple accusers of sexual misconduct. McMahon resigned from WWE last summer under the pretense of retirement. That new stock is looking good for some people, I think. So the 17.4 is the cost of that investigation. Dude, I need to become an investigator. $17.4 million to conduct an investigation? Look at how these things work. These auditing companies that come in once something happens, like, you know, the company that had to go, you know, check on Enron and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, there's there's money to be made where there's money being made. So now, remember I said the word moot was funny? Mm -hmm. An interesting note from the Bloomberg piece stated, lawyers for the Consolidated Shareholder Group now want a mootness fee. A mootness fee? A mootness fee. Counsel for the WWE investors indicated they plan to seek a mootness fee as a reward for their role in forcing him to pay the money he owed. It would be a mountainous journey to get to that mootness fee. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be another multiple million dollars. So, yeah, he uh, he paid his money, and now the thing has been dropped. And mm -hmm. It's amazing when you have money, what you yeah. can get away with. <laughs> can you believe it? Wow. God bless America. You may even make it to the Supreme Court one day. Person notes, I can't even find my YouTube plaque. Well, if I had $17.4 to find it, I'd have it this afternoon. I think we know where the plaque is. It's just a matter of where the whale is. No, we don't know plaque. where the plaque is. The pl well, we know the plaque, the plaque is with, the, with whale. the whale, but yeah. I don't know where the whale's at. See, that's... I don't know, know where this guy can turn that's up. That's something maybe Whale Scott ought to look into, is maybe, like, tagging, you know, or Oreo, and then you'll actually know with some GPS where exactly he's floating around in the world. WWE revealed more information on how its new World Heavyweight Champion will be decided. At WWE's pre-backlash press conference, Triple H announced that the World Heavyweight Championship Tournament will begin on Raw this coming Monday. Okay? The, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship will be the Raw Exclusive Championship. Therefore, it is starting on Raw Monday. Okay? There will be two triple threat matches on the episode. The winners will then face off against each other later that night to decide who will advance to Night of Champions. I'm already confused. Two triple what, threat what, matches. What's, what's, hold yeah. on, hold on. It gets better. Two triple threat matches will also take place on SmackDown ah, next curveball. Friday. Those winners face each other in the main event of that episode. Uh-huh. The winner from SmackDown... Uh-huh. ...will face the winner from Raw... Uh-huh. ...to determine the inaugural World Heavyweight Champion of Raw. Uh-huh. Which means the finals of the Raw tournament, after this draft, mm -hmm. will be somebody from SmackDown facing somebody from Raw. OK, which means theoretically, OK, that if the SmackDown person wins the Raw title, well, I would presume that person is now a Raw talent. Which, of course, begs the question, like, if this were real, OK, if this was a real thing, why would you as a SmackDown GM allow anyone to compete in this tournament, knowing that if they do well, you lose them? Well, you wouldn't, because that would be stupid. Because this whole thing is stupid. Because this whole thing is stupid, because last week on SmackDown, they said, they actually said SmackDown and Raw wrestlers will be eligible for the title that will only be on Raw. Then, on Monday, Paul Heyman came out and said, you know, Roman Reigns would really like that belt, but he can't compete for it because he's not on Raw. Which led to me thinking, wait a second, didn't you, and now they're saying that, in fact... In fact, 
SmackDown wrestlers can compete for the Raw title. But you see, this all ties into what I was talking about yesterday. You want to know why Roman Reigns can't compete for the title? Why? Because he ain't around to be in the tournament. Because it seems to me that as the champion, as the crown jewel, so to speak, the focal point of SmackDown, he should be able to be in that triple threat match to determine who is going to the night of champions. But he's not. Because it's stupid. You notice? I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not. But this show was really stupid until about July when Vince stepped down. And then from July all the way through uh, almost WrestleMania, like, you may not have liked the show. You may have had a criticism about this or that. But you know what it wasn't? It wasn't stupid like it used to be. Well, now he's back because he paid off a bunch of people for things that he had done that were wrong. He used all of his money. And now he's back. And you know what? Things are stupid again. Seems to me there's a, uh, a correlation here between, you know, Vince being around and things being stupid. So I am I think this whole thing is stupid. I don't know why we got SmackDown wrestlers wrestling for a Raw title. It doesn't make any sense. Makes no sense whatsoever. And, uh, yeah, so anyway... Great. Saudi money, baby. That's why you need to have all of your stars that you can compete for. So who is going to be that person from SmackDown who ends up coming out the victor and all that sort of stuff that can show their wares against either, I guess, Cody Rhodes or Seth Rollins? I mean, who else is it going to be right now? Omos? DJ says the belt was commissioned prior to Vince's return. Hey, listen, okay? Listen, here's a great example of what I'm talking about, okay? If you want to argue that you don't like the idea that the Universal Champion is going to one brand and we're making a brand new belt for the other brand, okay? If you don't like that idea, that's one thing, okay? But it is not what you could say is like a stupid idea, all right? The way that they the way that they explained it, like, the way that Triple H did his speech, that was stupid. But the idea that there's one, you know, we got belt for this brand belt, that's not a stupid idea. A brand split is not a stupid idea, okay? What is stupid is the execution. And all of the execution of these ideas since Vince came back has been stupid. That's the you know, problem. That's a great point, Brian. But since Vince is back, now everything's moot. I want a mootness fee for having to watch these shows and try to explain everything to you guys. Back in a moment, Observer Live. All right, a couple of uh, things right here. So I'm looking at the ticket maps and that sort of thing on WrestleTix. And uh, we'll have a, a good number. We'll have a good number here probably pretty soon. But according to WrestleTix, it, it appears that the number as of right now could be, and I quote, well above 60,000. So earlier in the show, I said that the rumor number was, uh, the rumor number was 65. I knew it was over 60. But uh, we may be we may be nearing sixty five seventy at this point for this show. So uh, Tony needs to get into the work and numbers game. So when this thing finally happens, he can announce like one hundred and eleven thousand people. Whatever like over the capacity is for Wembley, it should be one more person than that. <laughs> you know, everybody that's there, the parking attendants, everything. It's going to be absolutely ridiculous. It'll be interesting to see how much they actually set up and what the stage. And all that is going to be, too, because, you know, that's going to be pretty elaborate. All right. Collision. I've got to talk about Collision here. As the date for the yet-to-be-announced AEW Collision looms near, more details being discussed as it relates to CM Punk's return to the company to discuss roster split between Dynamite and the Saturday show. According to Dave and the New Observer, which you can grab as a subscriber to WrestlingObserver.com, you get all of the, uh, the the bits and pieces on the front page and around the internet, but uh, you don't get the entire 40,000 words every week that are in The Observer. Everything you ever wanted to know about what happened the prior week in professional wrestling. So check out WrestlingObserver.com, sign up, and read the whole issue yourself. Because, as was the case with at least one story today, what ended up on the internet was not exactly what Dave wrote. So if you only looked at that, you didn't get the whole story. Anyway, the updated plan is for, quote, less than a hard roster split between the two shows, and that Punk will appear on Dynamite 
when needed. However, quote, those with unresolved issues with Punk would be on collision the week that he's on Dynamite. <laughs> he also wrote that, quote, the idea is to get people to resolve issues, but that has not happened yet, nor has there been any notable progress. When it comes to the female talent, the thought is the split will not be hard at all with the women as they don't believe there is enough star power to do a hard brand split. None of the details above are final. The discussed new two-hour show is expected to air on TNT on Saturdays from 8 to 10, kicking off at a yet-to-be-announced late June United Center event that would feature Punk's first AW appearance since last September's All Out. Are they going to start holding these things at, at, like, CYO halls and, like, bingo halls and Teamsters halls or something? Like, you can't keep, like, two factions away from each other. And I know, look, you have to be there at a certain time. There's lo- There has got to be some sort of way where you can keep... If you need star power on a show where you're bringing CM Punk on and you want... Like, I, I just... It's this is we'll see how it goes, how this whole thing goes. But that's crazy where it's just going to be. We're not going to resolve it because that sounds like to me is we're not going to resolve this. We have no plans to resolve it, whether we're trying or not at this point. I don't know. But like if you're going to switch people that way, it's like, again, is this the right idea? Well, is this listen, the right move. Hey, I hesitate to say anything because I don't want people reporting what I'm saying here is like a fact because I have no idea. But, I mean, is it possible? Because, you know, all the way back to, uh, to the whole thing, we've had this problem over and over and over again where people want Tony and everybody else to talk about this, and he's never going to say anything about it. And I've said it a thousand times. He's never going to say anything about it, okay? And it's not just because he's trying to be difficult or making people upset, but it seems pretty clear to me that legally... He is not allowed to say anything about it, okay? Yes, that's so, for sure. So, is it possible that legally CM Punk and the Elite can't be in the building together? Is that possible? I don't know. I don't want people to report that's, that no, I that's said not that's possible. what happened. Here's this, that's not possible then because then you got a real big problem at Wembley. Because then well, that's what I was of... about to get to. Forget Wembley, okay? All pay-per-views going forward. All right. Yeah. Do you remember what WWE used to do when they really were trying to do this stupid brand split? It was to the point where they had Raw and SmackDown pay-per-views. And then eventually, you know, they were trying to do two pay-per-views a month. What a miserable time in my life that was, by the way. Yeah. So eventually they just brought it down to uh, single pay-per-views. And then, you know, the Raw people would face the Raw people, the SmackDown, blah, 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 blah. So, okay, CM Punk is largely going to be on Saturday. If he's needed on Wednesday, he'll be Wednesday. But when he's on Wednesday, the Elite apparently will not be on Wednesday. They'll be on Saturday. They will never be in the same place at the same time as what this says to me. So now what happens for the pay-per-view? Is CM Punk going to alternate pay-per-views with the Elite? Why can't somebody just stay on the damn bus? Why can't, if that's the issue, then you have enough money. It's not like some of these folks don't have buses. I mean, there's got to be a better way than where, okay, this whole click while CM Punk's segments are going on or while you need him for pre-tape or whatever, it seems like that would be an easier thing to just call them out walkies and go, okay, make sure they're out of here because we're coming into this. As opposed to, I don't know, that seems like it would make more sense than if you're going to, if you can't get along you got to be grown-ups about this because we have to do this because this is what WBD wants or whatever it is. If this is what Tony wants, whatever it is, if it's going to be this way, we actually have to have some professional parameters going on so we can have people in the same building at the same time without having to bring in national security because we think something is going to pop off. And if that's going to be the case, then WBD needs to come off some money. If they're the ones who are helping to push this, then you bring the security in and you bring people in to make sure that they're separated or buy them the buses to keep them apart. It's insane. This is so ridiculous. The buzz around what Collision will end up being. Dave provided an interesting detail as to the future direction of Rampage. He noted that Rampage will, quote, turn into what Dark and Dark Elevation were, more to showcase younger talent. Last week, he reported Rampage would remain on TNT on Fridays 
in an hour-long format, even after the expected launch of the new Saturday show on TNT in June. Direction is notable as both Dark and Dark Elevation quietly wrapped up their runs on YouTube last month due to an exclusivity clause signed with Warner Brothers. Which, by the way, sounds like they they, uh, have negotiated a new deal. And we don't seem to have any details of this deal. But, I mean, if, if we've got a, if we have got a new show coming and now we have an exclusivity clause where they can no longer put these shows on, on, uh, on YouTube, it sounds to me like they came to a new agreement. And I don't know what the deal would be, what the deal would be worth, et cetera. Well, but- it could just be an amended agreement now with this going on, you know, and taking place that, okay, we're relaunching WBD, you know, or we're re- relaunching Max and all that sort of stuff. So it's not may not necessarily be a new deal. It just may be an amendment on what they have. Well, they're adding a new show for two hours on Saturday night, so I think well, that's, that's, that's a that new deal. that obviously, yes, that is yes. a new deal. You're right. Yes. Uh, Meltzer noted the plan is for Dynamite and Rampage to tape together on Wednesdays, as has been the norm with Collision and Ring of Honor taping together on Saturdays. ROH airs on Honor Club is not part of the exclusivity clause for now. Quite frankly, dude, they don't need Dark and Elevation, okay? Like, here's the thing. I know a lot of people like Dark and Elevation, and I I didn't watch it, but the fact of the matter is, what was the idea behind Dark and Elevation? It was, it was to get people reps, because we use that word all the time. People need to get reps. But you know what? It's now been years, and, you know, a lot of these people that needed reps, they're better, but they're not, like, miles better. Because at the end of the day, what, what were they getting reps doing? They were getting reps doing squashes. They were getting reps doing three-minute matches. They were getting reps going in there and doing their, their big spots and whatever. That's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for you got to get out there, and you need to do – Here's the thing with reps. It has to be all sorts of different things. That's why the best way to get reps is to, you know, in the old days, you would just go territory, 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 territory. Nowadays, a lot of guys just like, oh, you know, I'm, an, I, I'm not signed anywhere. I'll do New Japan. I'll do, I'll do this indie, that indie, this indie, that indie. Nick Wayne's a great example. Nick Wayne works everywhere from Defy to GCW to, you know, he's going to, you know, the UK, everywhere. All right? So what getting reps is is, you're having long matches with different people in front of different crowds doing different things. You're, 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 you're dealing with everything you'd ever have to deal with in wrestling, doing it right. That's getting reps. Otherwise, you know, if it's just going in there and doing a two-minute squash match, it's essentially, aside from a crowd that's just kind of sitting there, it's the same as just, you know, go do practice matches, at, you know, wherever, at QT's school or whatever. I mean, that's so my point is we don't need dark and elevation. It's too much to do. It's it's like, let's just do our main shows. And for some people, let them go out and work. Let them go out and do some stuff. But it's that's not like there not like there weren't good things on there. You know, as far as if you're a fan of the independent scene to see some people get some shine on those shows and get the graphics and all that stuff. I mean, it really, it it was a, it was a nice thing. Again, there was so much going on. I've rarely had a chance to, to watch it. I would end up seeing more of it on Botchamania because of Excalibur and Taz going back and forth and them using a lot of that stuff. But, you know, this is just the evolution of things right now. And they have, again, they're going on five hours of TV they're going to have on, on national TV. They got to worry more about their the people that they do have right now and figuring out how to layer, again, how to layer a mid-card and a lower mid-card and all of that sort of stuff because that's something they haven't mastered yet. Wednesday's Dynamite, 776,000 viewers down 10%, lowest audience since October 18, which was a Saturday airing. For a Wednesday episode, it is the lowest viewership in almost a year, June 15, 2022. 18 to 49, eighth on cable, 0.28, which actually, as far as 18 to 49, is the same it's done for the past four weeks. Ties Dynamite's fifth lowest rating of the year. Programming related to, the, related to the NBA and NHL playoffs took five of the seven spot, top spots on cable. Vanderpump rules and watch what happens live on Bravo. That's a new one. Watch what happens live. I think they've had that before. I think it, didn't it used to be that was the post show for for all those reality shows at a post show. I think is that what that is? is? Everybody, what's so. what's watch what happens live? It's funny to even say it. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Watch what happens live. 
thinking one of those shows. I don't know. Yeah, it's the post show. Yeah. Okay. We should have a post show to this show. Dagan can do it. I was going to say, go for it. I'm out. <laughs> Dynamite's ratings were even or down in most categories. Yeah, that'd be a great idea. You know what would be fun is just when the show is over, just solely take feedback from the YouTube chat and uh, and, the, and the Twitch chat. Hey, it worked for Howard Man. Stern. He's got two channels. So yeah, you know who's not on. on his post show? Him. <laughs> As compared to the same week in 2022, Dynamite down 6.8% in total viewers, 12.5% in 18 to 49 so, uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah? It's Friday. What do you want? And New Japan Resurgence, May 21st on New Japan World. We've got the New Japan Strong Women's Title Tournament Finals. Talk about introducing a bunch of belts. How many women are on Strong? I've watched every single Solitary Strong ever, and I think the only women's match I ever saw was the one for the IWGP Women's Title. Well, now we have a strong women's championship. So we cannot have stardom women come over here and wrestle for it. Tanahashi and Osprey for the number one contendership to Kenny Omega's title. John Moxley, Wheeler Yuta, and Shooter Umino will be facing Okada, Ishii, and Rocky Romero. Love it. Hikaleo versus Kenta for the strong title. Fred Rosser, Juice Robinson in a street fight. Willow Nightingale. And Momo Kogo for the New Japan Strong Women's Title. Tur- it's a first round match. And Mercedes and Stephanie Vacare for uh, the other first round match. Bring me Yoda Suji, please. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. If you go to my Twitter at Brian Alvarez, Dean Rasmussen has passed away. And uh, there's a GoFundMe up there. You can still help his family. Lots of medical bills. And uh, if you've ever seen, and people have asked a thousand times over the years, what is that thing you've got in the logo? You mean the teal day bang? Well, I blatantly stole it from Dean. He used to do uh, he used to do reports on RSPW and Death Valley Driver back in the day. And these were the best reviews of anything that you ever in, imaginable. They were the absolute greatest. And apparently he would type them. And uh, it, one day he was trying to hit that exclamation point, if I recall correctly. But right next to it on the keyboard is the teal day. So he accidentally hit the teal day before. And I guess he just thought, eh, that's pretty cool. That's even more ex, uh, explanation, whatever. So anyway, he kept it. And uh, and it made all the reports a thousand times better. Expressive. Yep. And then I uh, I uh, I uh, you know stole it from him, and man, did I ever love reading those old. A lot of it was Japanese pro wrestling, but uh, he was the greatest. So anyway, very sad to hear of his passing. And if you have a few dollars, you can head up there to the GoFundMe and uh, toss a few dollars in and help his family in this time of need. So. Rest in peace to Dean, an all-time great of uh, pro wrestling recaps, I thought. So anyway, we're out of time, everybody. I want to thank you all for listening here today. Back uh, tomorrow, we'll be up after the Puerto Rico show, myself and Dave. Vinny and I, Sunday, will be the recap with Craig. Jim Valley. A lot coming up this weekend. Jim Valley tomorrow as well, of course. And uh, Andrew on Sunday. And that's it. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners over the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.